Hello everyone. My name is Joey Dixon. I'm the Engagement Officer for Cape York Natural Resource Management. Today I'm catching up with Melinda Greenfield to find out more about ant plants on Cape York with a particular interest in the species Myrmicode parii. So welcome Melinda. First off, would you like to tell us about your job and how you came to work with ant plants? Thanks Joey and hello everybody. Uh, my name is Melinda Greenfield and I am a PhD research student at James Cook University. And over the past few years, I've been studying the ant plant Myrmicode baccarii, as Joey said. And I'm particularly interested in interactions in this ant plant and my interest is in fungi in this ant plant. So Melinda, tell me, what is an ant plant? Ant plants are plants that have modified plant structures in which ants can live. So these are a really good example of a mutualism. And mutualisms, um, in a mutualism, the parties or the, the organisms involved in the mutualism benefit from the interaction. So ant plants provide ants with space in hollow structures in which ants can live. So the ants get, um, the benefit to the ants is a nice dry place where they can have their nest to rear their young, keep their queen. And in return, the ants provide the plant with things like um, protection. So the ants in these ant plants will um, come out of the plant and attack things that are attacking the plants. So say you get um, an insect, a bug comes along and starts chewing on the leaves of an ant plant, the ants will come out and attack it. So they're defending the plant. So that's the benefit to the plant. Also in these ant plants that I'm studying, there are certain chambers inside the structure where the ants live and the ants go to the toilet in those and they are feeding the plant. So the ants are responsible for basically for fertilizing or man manuring this ant plant. So that's a, a very important benefit to these ant plants that I'm studying because they are epiphytes. So they're found up in the treetops and um, you know their roots aren't in the soil. So this benefit of nutrients that the ants give them is very important. So Melinda, you've obviously put a lot of time and research into one um, species in particular. Uh, how many others are there? There are 680 ant plants worldwide. They're found in tropical regions throughout the world. Um, in Australia, we have seven. Um, three of those are from the genus Myrmicodia, as you mentioned, like the, the ant plant I'm studying, which is here on my right, is Myrmicodia baccarii. So there are three Myrmicodias in Australia, with Myrmicodia baccarii being one. And in Australia and Southeast Asia, our ant plants are quite different to the rest of the world. We have a lot of, as I said, epiphytic ant plants. So epiphytes are little are plants that sit up in the treetops. Um, whereas in Africa, South America, a lot of their ant plants are trees. So how do you tell the difference between them? The first thing to think about if you're looking at an ant plant in a tree is where are you? Myrmicodia baccarii is found in the Melaleuca forests or they're commonly called paperbark forests. Um, these are often swampy places as well. Um, Myrmicodia baccarii is also found in mangroves. So um, it's found in watery or seasonally watery places. It's never found in rainforest. The other two species of Myrmicodia are found, um, can be found in rainforest. They can also be found in the, in the paperback swamps and some um, mangroves as well. If you're in a rainforest, it's not Myrmicodia baccaria. The second thing to look at is what's called the domatia. And the domatia is the lower part of the stem, which is like a swollen structure, which is where the ants live. And in Myrmicodia baccaria, it's often like a chubby looking structure, it's sort of round, chubby, like a chubby belly. Whereas the other two Myrmicodias have more elongated um, domatia, so they and they often have ridges on them and spines. Whereas Myrmicodia baccaria is just more round looking. The next thing to look at um, is the stem. The stem on Myrmicodia baccaria has these indentations, um, 
Whereas one of the others, which is called Myrmecodia platytyrea, it has these little shields and they're quite easy to see even from the ground when you're looking up. So if you see little shields, it's not Myrmecodia beccarii, but look for these indentations and a chubby sort of lower part of the stem, the Dimatia. That's the best way to identify them from the ground if they're high up in the trees. If you're lucky enough to see them during the fruiting season, which is the wet season, um, Myrmecodia beccaria has white or creamy coloured fruit which come off directly off the stem, whereas the other two ant plant species of Myrmecodia have red and orange fruit. So that's a really easy thing to look for, but it's only in the wet season. The Myrmecodia beccaria's conservation status is listed as vulnerable on national legislation, Melinda. Uh, do you know what might be threatening the survival of this ant plant on Cape York? The main threat to this ant plant, Myrmecodia beccarii, is the destruction of its habitat. Um, historically, that's been for agriculture. Um, so Myrmecodia beccarii is found all the way down to um, around um, Ingham, Lucinda. It's been found down there and all the way up the Cape, I've heard it's been found at Bamaga. We don't know how widely distributed it is up on the Cape though. Um, so down south in the southern part of its distribution, you know, from Cairns, especially Cairns down to around Carbwell and down that area where there's a lot of agriculture, um, a lot of its forests have been cleared down there over, you know, over time. I haven't mentioned yet there's a butterfly that lays its eggs only on this ant plant. It's called the Apollo jewel butterfly. Its scientific name is Hypocrisops Apollo Apollo. The butterfly is also listed as vulnerable. Um, I've only seen one of them in all the years I've been looking around in the forest. Um, so it also needs protection because it only lays its eggs on this ant plant. Um, butterfly collectors have been blamed for taking caterpillars out of ant plants and basically cutting them open, um, taking the caterpillar so they can rear it and then kill it and pin it. So butterfly collectors have also been blamed for loss of ant plants. We actually don't know how widespread that was or still is. Um, so that's another area that we could try to help this ant plant by preventing the poaching of um, this ant plant and its butterfly. Why is it important that we look after this ant plant, Melinda? It's a great model plant for studying mutualisms. Um, there's still a lot the scientific community um, is learning about mutualisms and these are a great thing to study because there are different chambers in this ant plant. So it's like a house for ants. It has these chambers that are waste where they go to the toilet and then there's chambers where that I call the nursery chambers where they keep their young. And I've found different fungi in these different chambers. And this is all in the one network, you know, they're all interconnected like a, it's like a labyrinth or a maze of chambers and tunnels, like the tunnels are like hallways of the house and the chambers are like rooms, you know, and there's, it's such a fascinating plant along with, you know, there's the plant, the ants, the butterfly, fungi, there'll be bacteria. I know there's bacteria in there. I've seen little mites. So there's a whole lot going on and we don't even yet know understand everything that's going on you know and it'd be such a shame to lose these ant plants um, because of development when we haven't yet fully explored them how can people in communities help with the conservation of this ant plant well one thing they could do is um hopefully they'll learn some things about this ant plant from this video and just how fascinating it is and share that with other people get people interested in it interested to learn more about it if, they, if anyone up on the Cape sees this ant plant, if they are able to take a photo or note where they saw it, where they think they saw it and let us know, that would be great. Let your organisation know. It might help us um, learn more about where it's located up on the Cape because we still don't know. Um, there have been some surveys done in the past, but we could do more to figure out just how far up on the Cape it is. Like I've heard it's at Bamaga. But we don't know much about in between, you know, Cooktown. I went to Kootenai Payamu National Park and it's there. Um, but between Kootenai Payamu and Bamaga, we don't know much. So if people keep their eyes open for it, that would be really helpful. 
that that there pretty much concludes our conversation for today there melinda but i tell you what it's been great having you come in uh, having you talk to me over the computer through the computer today um definitely learned a lot and i hope that other people will benefit from this video as well thank you joey it was a real pleasure to talk to you and um happy ant plant hunting <laughs>